another thing. Like, I want to I wanna hire someone to, like, follow us around with the camera. Because I don't ever know where to really put it. I mean, yeah. I mean, I guess, I suppose I could just hold on to it. But then you wouldn't get to see me, so. Yeah, let me see it. Let me that's, hold on to it. That's one of the most important parts of this, is, like, seeing me. Oh. I mean, other to think of what I might have mentioned in the pod. I mean, I know Robert and I shot a lot of stuff out here. I mean, you probably recognize maybe the landscape from some of the short films we used to do uh, back in like 2011, 2012, right at the beginning of the pod. There's like the serviceman one takes place in this driveway. Um, I mean, and then as recently as just the Christmas special. <laughs> um, you know, and a few other things, I guess. I don't know. I mean, I can't think of much else in this neighborhood that, like, really... <laughs> it was mo mostly just, it all happened kind of, like, right here. If only people knew what you really had to go through to make a great movie. Okay, so yeah, this is the street I grew up on where we used to play a lot of street football and um, spent many evenings walking back home. Uh, lots of drunken evenings walking back home. <laughs> um, the street I'm going to be turning onto now is um, the street where the middle and the high school are located. And um, it was always uh, really nice having to like having schools a block away basically from where I lived because I was always a really late riser. I hated mornings and I left at the last possible second that I could and, and knowing that they were just so close like I could just sprint to school and, and make it on time. I was, I was always happy about that. The most challenging aspect is probably coming up with interesting notes on a weekly basis. I mean, that's that's got to be it for, for me at the moment. I mean, after having done like a lot of big projects and diving into a lot of like our childhood stuff already, sometimes it can be like, oh man, what are we going to do this week? Or I'll, I'll, maybe I'll bring like a news article or like come up with a game. It's just finding ways to like, keep it like fresh and fun. Um, that's probably the biggest challenge. Oh, we okay. Hey, I'm Jimmy Jordan, makeup artist. What? <laughs> yep, that's right. Uh, we're doing a little zombie makeup here uh, on Mr. Kyle Sipos. Um, this is the first zombie that they encounter in the film. And you know, I was gonna get some makeup artists, but I was like, what the? F why? Why not do? Why not have me do it and save on the stuff that we don't have to pay people, which we don't pay them anyways. But you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, small town likes. <laughs> okay, so yes, yeah, so this is the XF305. It was a very expensive camera when it came out. I, I paid about, well, between my, my mom and I, we both, it was uh, retailed for like $7,000. And yeah, it was very... Uh, I had the idea in my head that you could accomplish a great looking film by just buying really expensive equipment. And, um, you know, you just point and shoot. And of course there's just so much more to it than that. And I would come to learn. I don't know why I have to teach myself lessons the hard way a lot in life. Um, and so this is sort of like a, a reminder of like, hey, man, like, <laughs> slow down, like, do a little more research first. Action. 
things began taking a turn once we were a few weeks in. We stopped hearing from some of the main cast members, and truth be told, we were not very good at keeping in communication with them. There were no plans concocted for what we'd be shooting during the upcoming weekends until about a day or two before. Some weeks just became a wash, and we'd go play mini golf and drink beers. The fantasy was starting to implode on itself and turn into something much different. The scope of this project became more real, and eventually, death came to the dream of making a full-length feature and finally getting out of this place, man. When the dust settled, I still managed to hang on to those creative dreams, but that overly ambitious side of me started to disappear. Well, first of all, I mean, like, like where, where I thought I'd be right now, like looking back, I mean, definitely like career wise, like when I was in my early twenties, I thought maybe I would be doing something like in the film industry. Um, obviously that's not the case right now, but as far as like creatively, um, this is, I'm in a very good place. Like, um, having, having recently gone through like a lot of like personal development and changes over the past couple of years, I feel like I'm in a really like clear place at the moment. Like my, 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 my mind is very clear. I have been taking on a lot of like personal creative projects more so than I ever have in past years. And, um, definitely like not didn't think i'd be working in the job i have now but i enjoy it like i really love what i do and for the most part i mean it's very laid back um it's very chill people kind of leave me alone so it's really good for an introverted person um, which i've become more of also during the past few years um as far as like 10 years from now i would love to i mean as a dream like to spin this into something that allows me to just do this only would be amazing like to give me the financial security to just do this or something similar to this would be amazing um and just to continue to push myself creatively so like i mean 10 years I, it'd be awesome to have like a book or even a movie by then i think that would be awesome um it's something that i you know used to dream of a lot back in the day and kind of had you know it fell off for a while and i got discouraged and i didn't think to myself that it'd be possible but now i'm back in that place of like you know anything's possible if you continue to put the work in and do the things you need to do and um and also personally like i mean i guess i'd, I'd like to just stay consistent with my health uh, i've gotten better at that recently and 10 years from now yeah i'd love to be still active i mean i want to follow in the top the footsteps of uh tv12 and be able to get out there <laughs> a big fan of vodka mixed with most of all much almost anything <laughs> um or beer i mean i don't know like we coming from a small town it was easy to get away with a lot of stuff like we would just walk around the neighborhood sometimes and just drink and like line our pockets with beers So actually it was on this street, um, I think. I think it happened like right on the, like coming in over here. And that actually, it's fitting because that ice patch is like right there. And it's probably not too far off of how it looked that, that evening. Um, yeah, I mean, it wasn't like something, like in the moment I didn't even really remember it happening. But 
as I woke up the next day. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, look at that. <laughs> it's pretty nasty. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know. Like that was definitely one of the events that helped in triggering the idea of, of going, getting rid of it, going, like quitting. So February 2020, uh, my mom passed away from cancer. Uh, she, so she had a, it was a long battle. Uh, she originally was diagnosed with um, breast cancer, which she overcame and then um, would later get uh, diagnosed with ovarian cancer. And um, it was a, it was a, long, long battle, uh, which, um, led in, toward, toward the end, uh, she stayed in a hospice care, uh, basically, uh, basically the last month. Um, yeah, uh, The scripted ones are something that I, I sort of came up with um, during the time that I, um, well, actually, really, it started when I did my first episode that was scripted called Grief, uh, Sobriety, and Hope, which was a personal essay about quitting alcohol and nicotine and um, going through the process of grief after my mother died, and sort of like what came after that and the person I became through those events. Um, and it really struck a chord with some people, it seemed. And um, I got a lot of positive feedback when I put it out. Keep holding on tight. You've got this. This month was, of course, all about reflecting. All I can say is, if you haven't in a while, look back and try to gain some insight. There's some useful knowledge in there. I don't know what the future holds, but these past 30 years have been rich in experience and growth. Sometimes I still feel lost, but never scared. I have hope, and things look brighter than they ever have before. I have dreams and ambitions, and now I always do my research before making any large purchases. Bring on the next 30 plus. I'm ready. Media pod smash off. dad uh, and Jamie um, I am just extremely thankful that I have been a part of this family and that you have been in my life um, you I mean Jamie you've been an extremely awesome big sister throughout my entire life growing up uh, you always you influenced a lot of like my, my tastes in music and other pop culture and introduced me to a lot of like really cool bands that I would have never seen before if, if I you know didn't uh, get to go to these concerts with you um, you always you know you, you always took me out to different things and never really saw me as an annoyance I mean Back in the early days, yeah, maybe a little bit, but you know, we grew a lot closer as we got older, and you know, yeah, it was, you were always willing to take me to things and do things with me, and um, you always had some great advice to give. And 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 Dad, I mean, it's like amazing how much you have given me, um, how mu how supportive you've been uh, of my dreams, how you know financially um you haven't ever <laughs> kicked me out which is awesome <laughs> um yeah i mean it's just i i want to say like you know thank you for everything and for being positive influences on me um and always providing me with the things that i i needed and um i never really ever felt in life that like 
I never felt scared or worried. Like I always had a meal. Like it was, I just want you to know, like, yeah, you, you gave me a great life. 